Hello, I am Austin Rodriguez. This oh, is ben. Silent Man. <laughs> uh, we did our independent lab on refraction, which you may not know about. So, what the shuggy darn is refraction? So, refraction is how light changes direction after passing through a certain medium. And uh, originally, I thought it was measured by change in angle, but Doc told me I was wrong, and that's actually measured by the sign of the change in angle, correct? Right? Yeah. Sign according yeah, to. The we're talking index about, of refraction. Index yeah, of refraction, right. So, this is Snell's Law, and this is what we pretty much based our whole lab on. And we actually messed up the first time we did the lab because we defined the angles wrong, and it has to be defined vertically like it's shown there, but we did not know that. So the ends are the index of refraction. So for example, air is like something like 1.00027. So, and that affects how it's viewed. So water, I don't remember the exact number, but it's like 1.7. 1.072 or something. Yeah, don't, so don't the, call me on that. the greater number you get, the more the view is changed, and the more it's bent, like it was shown in the last slide. So the more, like, the more they would change to so the angle. All right. So our, the first part of our lab <coughs> was to see how changing the entry angle. So we just popped our setup first. Yeah. All right. So we. I uh, bad handwriting, so we can get on there if you want to do this. So we just had this bucket, right? This is pretty much actual size. So, and we filled it with water, and our better data came from when Ben constructed this apparatus that I don't understand. So originally it was a really bad idea, but we couldn't think of a better way. Originally we just held a protractor here and tried to have somebody hold the light. Yeah, and it kept moving because we have shaky hands. It was hands. pretty much like a cat trying to chase a light, if you can imagine that. Trying to get the Which distance. is funny. So then, when we went back and ta took data, we were able to tape the laser so that it stayed at a constant angle in the right entry angle that we wanted. So then we shine the light down. It goes like that. And then we had a ruler here to measure where the light hit the bottom and also to measure where it hit when it went in the water. And so you need this distance. This will make more sense because we're doing a proof label. Like yeah, so you can write down the proof practice. This distance. Just, like, this distance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Pretty much it's a bucket of water for laser. It's a ruler. Simply put. Yeah, it's not, it's not that complicated. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Right. So we're going to see how changing the angle of entry, so how we were holding the laser. What affects the refraction? Um, we're just going to do that by measuring different angles of entry. Phase two, we're going to see how changing the water temperature would affect the refraction. And that was originally the purpose. We expected the greatest change from that. We thought any other change would be incidental, originally. Uh, in our last phase, we were going to measure how the depth of the water would affect the angle of refraction. The refraction. Right. So the procedure we kind of talked, we pretty much, this kind of shows it, but for the first lab, we did 10 degrees through 80 degrees, because 90 doesn't work very well. Uh, the second one, we did, and we measured, like I said, where it hit the water and where it hit the bottom. The second one, it took a little time, but we pretty much just dumped a bunch of ice in there. And then we also, the kind of annoying thing about that one was we had to take some water out because we wanted to keep the depth constant. So that took a little time. And then we did the same thing <coughs> with a constant angle too. And then for the third one, we kept the temperature constant and performed the same thing with a constant angle. <coughs> so just minor little changes for each one that make differences. All right, so. I didn't make most of these okay, so the hypothesis for the first one, we uh, hypothesized that as the angle of entry increased, so would the angle and index of refraction. So pretty much, I'm alright, or I'll leave that off, but 
We hypothesized that if the angle went in at about 20 degrees, and then we did 80 degrees, the 20 degree one would have less of a, uh, we would calculate less of an index of refraction than the angle of refraction. And for the second one, as the temperature decreases, the angle of index of refraction will increase. So that one's kind of self-explanatory. But when we put ice in there, we expected that uh, the angle of refraction will be greater, and so would the index, because it's a slower medium. And the third one, the depth, this one we were kind of guessing on, but we thought the more water there were, there was, the more area there would be for well, the light to change. <coughs> no. I think this one. This was. Uh, wasn't there there was. We'll talk about later. All right. So we used a laser from Doc's supply, a plastic bucket, as you see. Some, we used a measuring stick, which is just a meter stick, a protractor, and a thermometer for phase two. Yes. So this is kind of what we did. So to find, uh, we, what I talked about we messed up earlier, and you have to define theta from vertically. So we actually... I'm not quite sure which one we define it as, but this should be theta one, and that's a known because that's what we use to get the protractor. And then this angle right here should be theta two. And if we label this distance x one and this distance x two, then we can to find theta two. It's just Theta 2 equals 90 minus the inverse of tangent uh, with 0 point. You just probably write that given on the graph on the Yeah, this is uh, 0. This is the distance, the uh, depth of the water. <coughs> In meters. So that's supposed to be in there. So that's what we use to find. Uh, the angle of refraction, and then we plug that back in the equation to get the index. So, our results were kind of what we thought they would be, except for the third one. Yeah. So when we shine, when we shine, shone the light in with uh, the bigger angle, the greater angle, we got a greater angle of refraction, which is what the, it should be based on the equation. And these two, because they weren't in the equation, we were kind of guessing. But the warmer the water got, the greater the increase. Uh, index of refraction. That's actually the reverse of what we hypothesized. We're not quite sure why it did that, but it's what our data showed. So we th it, I think it might just be the way the mo molecules work when they heat it up. And then the angle of refraction decreases with more water. That was opposite. That was, that was odd, yeah. Yeah, we were kind of confused by that one, and we really weren't able to explain it. Well, that's just bad data, but. All right, so we, we spent the most time trying to figure out the last results. And as Ben said, I still don't understand why it did that. I think it was mostly due to our flawed data. And we now have a better way, as Ben said. So after we retake, finish retaking for whatever we do to it, after we redo that data, I think that we should get a result that is more in line with our hypothesis. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. Because the first way was just awful and inaccurate. That's the last slide. Yeah. <laughs> Time for a question. If you'll stop clapping, you could ask him a question. Uh, anybody? All right. All right. Thanks again, guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs>